Fairfax Bible Kids, it's Miss Carissa. And as you can see, our Christmas tree is full. We had Christmas this week. It was a wonderful week. We hope that you had a wonderful Christmas. I hope that you have enjoyed all the decorations and all the celebrations and still remembered the reason that we celebrate, that Jesus was born. Today after service, we recommend that you watch Jelly Telly's Clive and Ian's Christmas as they answer some questions about Christmas. Clive and Ian are funny little guys. They have 12 little one minute episodes. You can watch them one every day, or if you have the patience that me and my kids have, you will watch them all at once in one sitting. And um, though they're silly, they can be very informative. So now I hope you're ready for our final wise guy trivia. This week we are asking the question about the wise men and it is, what were the gifts? that the wise men brought to Jesus? Was it A, diapers, wipes, and onesies? Very practical. Was it B, toilet paper, Lysol, and hand sanitizer? That sounds good. Or was it C, gold, myrrh, and frankincense? If you said C, you would be right. Gold, myrrh, and frankincense. Although the other gifts listed there would have been helpful with the toddler, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 2, verse 11, they opened their treasures and they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. These would have been valuable spices and riches that they brought with them from the east, gifts fit for a king. And Jesus is our king forever. Great job with our Wise Guy trivia. We hope that you enjoy watching Clive and Ian's Christmas after service today as they answer 12 questions about Christmas on Right Now Media. Have a great new year. Jesus loves you, and so do we. Happy, Happy New Year! Well, hello, Fairfax Bible Church, and Merry Christmas. I hope you guys had a great time celebrating Jesus with your family as we wait for his return again. Uh, if you're new with us, or if you've been joining us for a while now, we'd love for you guys to take a moment to fill out our online register, which you'll see a link for either in the Facebook chat or in the YouTube description. Just a great way for you guys to let us know how you'd love to connect with us as a church. So whether that's joining a small group, or if you're looking for a place to serve, or if you just wanna let us know how we can be praying for you this week, go ahead and take a moment to fill that out. Uh, we'd love to get in touch with you about that. Also wanna make you aware one last time of a last opportunity to give to the Lamb Center. If you're looking for uh, a way to give financially at the end of this year, if you go on our website, you'll see in the bottom right-hand corner, there's a button that says give. So you can click on that button, look for the Lamb Center under what fund you wanna give to. And so if you're interested in that, just the last opportunity for you guys to give financially. Now here at Fairfax Bible Church, we believe a, a growing disciple is someone who worships Christ, walks with Christ, and works for Christ. And I wanna give you guys a heads up on two ways that we can encourage you to do that this new year. Number one, we hope that you would commit to worshiping with us every Sunday. And actually, starting next week, January 3rd, we're gonna be meeting in person every Sunday night at 6 p.m. at the City Gates Church. So that means no more Sunday morning virtual services. We won't have childcare for that, but we will be live streaming each of those services for those who can't attend in person. But we'd love to see you guys starting next week at 6 p.m at the City Gates Church. And number two, we believe the primary way for us to grow as disciples at Fairfax Bible Church is through small groups. And uh, we have seen some significant growth this past year in our small groups. And we are excited to announce that Ian and Ashley Jones will be launching a new small group starting right after the new year. So we've got plenty of room for you guys to join a group if you're interested. So if you're watching this right now and you're like, hey, I really wanna get plugged into a small group, not sure how I do that, would you let us know on your online register that you're interested and getting connected with a group, and we'll make sure we reach out to you this week and get you connected. That's all I've got for you guys this morning. Why don't you join us in worship? Come thou long expected Jesus Born to set thy people free From my fears and sins release us let us find our rest in thee Israel strength and consolation hope of all the earth thou art desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. 
to deliver born a child and yet a king born to reign forever now thy gracious kingdom
of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appears and my soul felt his worth. A Let all within us 
Amen. Let's pray. Lord, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for giving us this gift to be able to worship you and, and bring praise to you. So I pray that we would have hearts that are concentrated and minds that are concentrated on your word and that you would be glorified through the preaching of your word. So give us humble, hear, humble ears and um, open hearts to your word. In your name, amen. Well, good morning, Fairfax Bible Church. I hope you had a very Merry Christmas this week. Why don't you take your Bibles and go with me to the book of Matthew. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 1 to start uh, this morning. And uh, man, I hope that you've been thinking about this great story that we've been celebrating in Christmas and the fact that it gives us so much ho hope as we're uh, ending 2020 and looking into 2021 and jumping into the new year. This story kind of anchors us in some truths that I think we need. So I want you to uh, follow along with me as I read here in Matthew chapter 1. Uh, I'm going to pick up in verse 21, okay? This is when the angel has come to talk to Joseph and to tell him about what's going to happen. In verse 21, uh, he says to Joseph, She, Mary, will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Man, this is such an awesome truth. We're, we're, we're looking at the theology and the implications of the incarnation that the eternal son of God became a man, fully God, fully man, and he entered into our world and he did it, it says, to be with us. This word Emmanuel is a Hebrew name, and he's quoting from the prophecy in Isaiah chapter 7, and Matthew here provides the interpretation for those of us who don't know Hebrew so that we wouldn't miss the significance of this name. He wants you to get it down, like don't miss this. He he puts it in parentheses there so that you know that this name means God with us. Literally, with us is God. Have you thought about what that means? Like, like, like why, why is that so important? The gift of somebody's presence is pretty special. I think about my beautiful wife, Carissa, and, and, and when Carissa and I were dating, which uh, on Tuesday, we're actually celebrating 14 years of marriage, and I praise God for that. And I think about all those years ago when we were just dating, and, and uh, we, we had to experience our entire dating and, and even engagement was all long distance. And I, and I was in Chicago and in Indiana, she was in Massachusetts, and then in Michigan, and we were just never in the same place uh, at the same time for very long, and we, we had this longing just to, to, to be together, and, and I was really thankful for the phone, that was great, but, but I wanted to be with her. It's like the way that kids want to be with their mom and dad, right? Kids want to play with mom and dad. What, what I've learned is that you don't even have to be like great at playing dolls or kitchen set or Legos or whatever it is that they want you to do. You don't even have to understand the rules of what you're playing. They just want to be with you. The gift of somebody's presence shows up when, when you're also facing something scary. Like, like our kids don't even want to go down into the basement at night all by themselves unless somebody goes with them. They don't want to be alone. We also feel it during special seasons and special occasions, which is why over the holidays, families want to spend time with each other. And I know that's probably why it's been really hard this year with all the complications and, and, and all the restrictions that we've been facing. Because when we go through times like this, we want to be with the people that we love. When you're going through tragedy or when you're going through something really difficult or, or pain, you want somebody with you. And some, sometimes that's all you need. You just want somebody to just, just sit there and, and be there. You want to experience their presence. So have you ever taken the time to consider and appreciate this awesome truth that God is with you? That, that I, I think we need this uh, assurance right now as uh, 2020 has been filled with all sorts of challenges and 21 is 
filled already with uh, all sorts of uncertainties. But, but the incarnation, this story that we've been considering, puts everything into perspective and helps us step into the new year with, with hope and with confidence in God's promises because of the certainty of his presence with us. So here's the big idea that I want you to just reflect on today is this. In Jesus, we can enjoy the presence of God. It's true now, and it's going to be true in the future. That Because of Jesus and in Christ, we get to enjoy his presence. And, and, and next week, we're actually going to uh, try to renew our resolve to get after the mission uh, uh, as disciples who worship, walk, and work for Christ. We want to start the year strong and, and get back into some godly habits so that, so that we're really uh, continuing to be a growing church. And, and then we'll spend the rest of the month of January uh, preaching through the book of Habakkuk, uh, which I'm pretty excited about to get into one of the Old Testament prophecies. And there's so much hope there, even in the darkness and, and, and confusion. And I think there's going to be so much practical things for us to uh, take away from that. But, but today we want to uh, conclude our Christmas series considering the implications of the incarnation, that, that, that God became man so that God could be with us. And so here are, here are four truths that I want you to consider. These things give us great comfort and hope and joy as we're looking and, and getting started in uh, the new year. Here's the first if you're taking notes. Note this. He wants to be with us. He wants to be with us. That's an awesome truth. The, the, the birth of Jesus, our Emmanuel, was the turning point in a long, sad story of what humanity lost because of sin. Now, now, before sin, think about it, before sin, Adam and Eve enjoyed the presence of God in the Garden of Eden. But, but after sin, after they had rebelled, we, we, we get this horrible picture in Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, that says, They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God. Like, if they hadn't sinned, we could just imagine that, that when they heard God's footsteps in that moment, they would have, they would have come running like, like kids who've just been told that daddy's got a surprise for them, right? Like, 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 like they're looking forward to another uh, peaceful stroll in the park or another exciting adventure with their creator. I mean, that would have been an incredible experience to, to live that out. What a, what a way uh, to live in the presence of God and enjoying that forever. But, but because of their sin, instead of enjoying that, we see them, they're hiding in shame and fear and the fellowship that we were created to enjoy with God was lost because of sin. And the story of the Old Testament, as we just keep reading through the scriptures, it's meant to try to convince of this, this depressing and, and devastating reality. There's nothing we can do about it. There's nothing that we can do to get that fellowship back. The, 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 this, this is what we were made for, but it's lost and it's, it's, it's out of our reach. It's not something we can get back. And then even when there's like, it, it seemed like, like there was a little bit of hope because you remember we studied in the book of Exodus that God chose his people and even rescued them out of slavery and he, and he instructed them to build the tabernacle. And, and we read in Exodus chapter 29, the reason he did that, he says, I will dwell among the people of Israel, and I will be their God, and they shall know that I am the Lord their God, who brought them out of the land of Egypt, that I might dwell among them. While that was, you know, we know that was just a shadow of, of, of better things to come. It was still a glimmer of hope, but, but that was short-lived too, and, and it was broken because the people were sinful and they rejected God. And it's just proving over and over to us that we as humans just can't enjoy fellowship with God because of our sin. But praise God, that's not the whole story. That's not the end, that there's more to it. With that hopeless background in mind, these words that we just read in Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, they ought to make our hearts skip a beat with excitement. We read this, that, that behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God 
with us. John says this in John chapter 1, verse 14. He said, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Literally, he tabernacled among us. He came to earth to be with us so that we could be with him. That our, our fellowship with God has been restored through his sacrificial death on the cross for our sin. What an awesome truth that the God who made us didn't just give up on us. He, he didn't just forget about us. He, he didn't just destroy us, even though it would have been right for him to do that. But in the gospel, it, it, it tells us that he, he loves us and he wants to be with us. I want you to hear, consider these words that Jesus prayed. John chapter 17, if you haven't read John 17 in a while, that's Jesus' high priestly prayer. There's so much rich theology there that we're learning from. We've been gleaning a lot from that in the incarnation. But I want you to hear uh, what he said in verse 24. John 17, verse 24, Jesus says this, Father, I desire, I want, I desire that they also whom you have given me may be with me where I am. Man, let that anchor your perspective on your circumstances right now. Because sometimes when we're going through difficulties or we've got some disappointments in life, we, we, we start questioning God's love or God's goodness for us. But, but what we're reading here is it's Jesus' desire, the thing that he wants, he wants to be with you. He wants to be with you. And he's done what was necessary to make that possible. It, it's like he walked into the orphanage of sin. And he picked you. And he picked you up and he did everything that was necessary to adopt you, and to make you his own, so that you could belong, even though you don't deserve it. And he, and he rescued you because he loves you so much that he died for you so that, think about this, so that he could enjoy a relationship with you. Don't doubt the love of God for you. There's the second truth that I hope is an encouragement that brings comfort and hope and joy. Note this. He is with us even when things are hard. He's with us even when things are hard. To, to see this one, you're going to have to uh, turn with your Bibles to Psalm 23. Psalm 23, and, and uh, this is a very familiar text, and, and you've known, you, we've, we've studied this before, but I think there's some encouraging truths. These aren't things that you've never heard before, but man, I hope that the, uh, the, this Christmas season that God is just impressing these things into your heart and helping you reflect and meditate on who he is and the implications of the incarnation here, that he is with you even when it gets hard. I want you to see this Psalm 23. I'm going to start in verse 1. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, so I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Look at verse 4. Don't miss this. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Man, I, I, I love this text because it's, it's kind of raw and honest. Death is our enemy. And, and death casts a deep, dark shadow over all of life. Like we just, we can't escape this, this painful reminder that we're living in a broken world. And, and David actually uses this poetic imagery to try to help you feel the contrast. We've, we, there's a scene change Fr from verse one. Verse one, you're seeing like, like lying down in green pastures beside still waters, like this comforting picture of um, tranquility and, and, and peace and, and calm. And, 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 and then there's a scene change in verse four where we're walking through a valley where instead of fear, fear, feeling the, the cheerful sunshine on your face on a beautiful day, it's like the thunder clouds have moved in and there's this suffocating threat. Uh, the, the Hebrew there could mean deep darkness or gloom. 
And at Christmas is often when we feel this the most. That there's a heightened sense of loss around the holidays. When, when everything else is like decorated with cheer and, and, and everybody's supposed to be celebrating that, that, that the pain of tragedy and, and missing friends and missing loved ones intensifies and there's this aching reminder that, that, that things are not the way they were supposed to be. Really, all you have to do is just keep living, keep having birthdays, and eventually you're going to find yourself in the valley of the shadow of death. It's coming. And it could be personal loss. It, it, it could be broken dreams. It could be disappointment. It could be uh, shattered relationships or, or health scares. Or, or career, or financial struggles, or unexpected challenges, circumstances that you didn't see coming, whatever it is, life is hard. But I love what he says. Look at it again in verse 4. Even though, those are two awesome words. Even though, because what he's doing there is he's acknowledging that darkness is a part of life. This is part of the experience of living in a broken world. Like we know it's coming. I'm not going to ignore the reality. I'm not just putting on a plastic smile and pretending like it's not hard. It is hard and it hurts. But even though I'm going through it, he says, I will fear no evil. Why? Why? For you are with me. The, the, the presence of our Emmanuel in the midst of deep darkness and, and sadness and, and scary circumstances allows us to face them without letting our hearts get hijacked by fear and believing that we're doomed and, and, and there's no hope and that the sun won't rise again. And even if my worst nightmares are realized, it will not change the fact that the omnipotent God of all comfort is with me. And no matter how deep that darkness grows, I will never be alone. I'll never be alone. And, and he's going to walk through that valley by my side. And it's his uh, he's going to lead me with his rod and his staff of protection and care to, to comfort me with this glorious reminder that he is the good shepherd who literally laid down his life for me. Some of you are going through it. I've talked with many of you who have been experiencing even just the last couple of weeks. And, 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 and we don't have to compare whose valley is darker, who's, who's got it worse. But I hope you sense that, that one of the treasures of the incarnation is knowing that Jesus gets it. That, that he became a man so that he would sympathize with our weaknesses. He suffered as we did. Like he understands. He knows. But I also hope that you get this and sense this truth that he's with you. Sometimes it's actually in the valley where we feel his presence most, which might be a special grace that you could praise him for. One of the Puritans prayed this, that the valley is the place of vision. In the daytime, Stars can be seen from the deepest wells. And the deeper the wells, the brighter thy stars shine. Or a more recent songwriter said this, He's no less God within the shadows. No less faithful when the night leads me astray. In fact, it's often in the darkest moments in life where, where the light of Christ just shines all the brighter and Jesus proves his faithfulness to us with his comforting presence, that he is with us even when things are hard. How does that change uh, your perspective on what you're going through right now? Especially in light of the fact of what we might be facing and all the uncertainties in the new year. 
I realize there's so much we don't know about the future. We have no idea what's coming. We have no idea how things are going to change and if things are going to get better, if things are going to get worse. We don't know. But this we know. He is with us. And the theology of Christmas and the incarnation should give us a jolt of confidence in his promises as we step into the new year. And, and this third truth, if you're taking notes, note this. He will always be with us and never leave us. He will always be with us and never leave us. I want to, I want you to see this in Matthew chapter 28. Turn back to Matthew at the very end of Matthew's gospel. Again, another text you're very familiar with. You've heard these things before, but maybe we pick up on the theology and, and this theme uh, that we're seeing even in a familiar text. Matthew chapter 28, starting in verse 18, he says, Jesus came, to, came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And watch this. Behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Like, like, like after Jesus commissions us to go make disciples of all nations, that's our mission. We're getting after it. He says this. Behold, that word there, it's an interjection to try to get our attention. Like, look. Check this out. Don't miss this. I am with you always. Did you hear that? D don't forget this. Notice actually that, that, that Matthew then begins in, in chapter 1 and ends here in chapter 28. He, he bookends his gospel account with this promise of Jesus' presence. That our Emmanuel will be with us as we go. I think of Frodo and Sam in The Lord of the Rings as, as Frodo's getting ready to leave the rest of his friends to take the ring to Mordor to destroy it. He's got this, this scary and impossible quest that he's facing and he looks back and, and, and Frodo says, go back, Sam. I'm going to Mordor alone. And, and, and Sam, jumping into the water after him, says, of course you are, and I'm coming with you. And, and the tenacity and the resolve of that friendship is what we experience in the faithfulness and the assurance of Jesus. That, that, that he's not sending us out alone. And no matter where and no matter what we're facing as we go, he's saying to us, I'm coming with you always. Man, what an encouraging truth this is. Do you know this? You have a great purpose for your life. You have a great purpose for your life. And it's not some big dream uh, for the distant future. It's right in front of you. That Jesus sent you here, right where you're at, for this moment to make disciples of the people that are around you in your sphere of influence, your friends and your family, your coworkers, your neighbors, these, these people that he's placed in your life. You have this great privilege to tell them that Jesus came to be with us so that we could be with him forever. And it's a big task. And he knew that. And so he sent his spirit, not only to be with you, but to be in you to be your helper, to see it done. He is all we need. The writer of Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 13, verse 5, he goes into uh, uh, some rapid uh, application in, in chapter 13 of the book of Hebrews, but he says this, keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I think the reason he's saying that is he's trying to help us understand. You, you never have to look for security or satisfaction anywhere else. You don't have to get more money. There's nothing. You have everything you need because you have this promise of God's presence. He will always be with us and he will never leave us which makes us think about the future. 
and leads us to this fourth truth that brings us so much comfort, so much joy, and so much hope. We will be with him forever. We are going to be with him forever. In John 14, verse 3, Jesus said this, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. This was his plan. This is what he came to do. And because of what Jesus has done for us, this is what we have now to look forward to. That, that we have this great hope. And it's not just some like optimistic, I hope so. This is a confident, I know so. I know this is true, that we are going to live forever with God. That we're going to get to enjoy fellowship with, with God. It's what we were made to do, and we're going to get to enjoy it forever. And we see it on display. Revelation chapter 21, verse 3 says, I, I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them as their God. Man, what a great hope. I hope you're seeing that the theology of the incarnation fills us with comfort and joy and with great hope. And man, more than anything, I hope that our study through this has magnified the greatness of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, the Son of God, our Emmanuel, God with us. Lord, we give you praise that you have accomplished this. So many times we run after other things. We've tried to find satisfaction or security somewhere else. And Lord, forgive us of that. You're it. You've done what is necessary so that we could get back to this uh, relationship that you created us to enjoy, this fellowship, that we can have that with you. And we have that assurance that it's going to last forever. It's never going to end. What joy we have. So we give you praise. We give you glory. You are deserving of it, our Savior, our Emmanuel. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to everybody. This is our last virtual service of 2020, believe it or not. I know this has been a crazy year, an unprecedented year, a lot of changes. Uh, this little nugget wasn't here when we first went virtual and started doing everything. Um, I've had the privilege of being able to lead worship and help lead worship for a lot of 2020, um, which has been, just like we talked about, unprecedented in terms of everything that, is, that has happened this year. Uh, some of us feel pretty sad about it. But uh, as we close the year out, I, I just wanted to take some time to uh, focus on really where our assurance comes from and we we have our hope in Christ. It, it's not in circumstances or, or things that might happen. So as we close out 2020, uh, let's do it in, in worship and in praise to Jesus' name. So let's sing Build My Life.
It has been good to praise the name of Jesus together. Thank you so much for staying with us and participating with us, even when it's been virtual. And I'm thankful for the technology that's allowed us to be able to do this. And we're praising God. We're so thankful for uh, City Gates and their generosity and allowing us to use their facility. We cannot wait to see you next Sunday. From here on out, Lord willing, uh, this is going to be the plan uh, through January, hopefully, hopefully through February for now. W every week we're going to be meeting Sunday nights at six o'clock and we can't wait to be able to worship in person. Uh, but we really want to start the year strong, so I want to encourage you to be there. We're going to get back after uh, what it means to be a disciple that worships Christ and walks with Christ and works for Christ. Let's, let's get after the mission that he's called us to. So church isn't over. Let's go be the church this week and as you go, love Christ and live sent.